What's going on guys? Liam here for the NRL recap. Man, it's so good to have footy back. So pretty much guys, every Sunday I'll do a show, a video, whatever you want to call it. Just going over the weekly results, team stats, uh, player stats, uh, some of the bets I won, some of the bets I lost, and just a little bit of analysis about it. And yeah, just, man, I'm just, I'm just excited. The Titans-Tigers game just wrapped up, and even that game was pretty good, man. I was, I was blown away. So obviously make sure you're following to stay up to date with everything. Guys, not only that, um, I was doing a giveaway on my TikTok as well, 250 bucks. So make sure you follow me there too and follow here as well. I've been getting a lot of um, companies hitting me up to sort of give me money to um, sort of shout out their brands and stuff like that, which I will do. However, I'll be giving all the money away to you guys, competitions, all that sort of fun stuff. So... I don't need the money, so I thought I may as well just give it back, sort of thing. So, plenty of cool stuff coming up, guys. So, make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube, the TikTok, and stay up to date with everything because it's going to be a big year for us, man. We're out here. All right, let's just go over all the games real quickly, and then we'll go into each one in a bit more depth. Parramatta, Melbourne, what a game to kick off the year. Golden Point. Um, Warriors Knights, it was actually an alright game. Penrith Broncos, what a game. Penrith uh, Broncos just getting home there. Manly Bulldogs, man, they were impressive. Cowboys just got the um, the Raiders. Bunnies, really impressive. Just got over, uh, well, didn't just get over, but it was, it was a little bit closer than that score sort of uh, suggests, I guess. And welcome to the NRL, the Dolphins nudging out the Roosters. And then this hasn't reloaded yet, but uh, Titans got home pretty safely there. All right, so let's go round one. Storm Parramatta. This game was super, super close. Obviously went to Golden Point. Mitchell Moses missed a couple goals. Otherwise, but I think Parramatta probably would have got this not comfortably, but would have created a bit of scoreboard pressure. Um, I actually feel like they were the better team, but Melbourne Spine, Cam Munster, Harry Grant. Jerome Hughes, they were much better than Parramatta's spine. And um, like Parramatta won a lot of these stats as we'll go through. And they had more possession, had more time in possession. You know, completion rate was slightly better. Um, you know, um, I don't know how this works, but they somehow had more sets but less time in possession. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was a really, really good game, super even. And I said this at the end of the game. I did a little mini recap of it on my TikTok. And... Um, uh, I just said both, both the, everyone said both these teams are going to fall off. I said, and I just said that both these teams are going to whoop a lot of teams this year, and both these teams are going to make the eight. All the pieces are there. They're going to be good. They're both going to improve, and yeah, they're going to be these. These two teams are going to be a handful. I promise you that. But um, all running meters, Melbourne a little bit better there. I feel like um, is a Meany, the fullback, best game I've seen him play. He had some really good um, kick return meters. Post contact meters, Parramatta won there. Junior Paulo was enormous. Line breaks, Melbourne got it there. Um, tackle breaks, Parramatta. See, see what I mean? It's very, very, very even. This year was big for me though. Um, the average play the ball speed was lightning for Melbourne, and um, yeah, they they definitely were playing the ball a lot quicker than Parramatta. Offloads, Parramatta got them there, um, and yeah, that was, that was that's pretty much it. Um, that was pretty much it. That sort of um, effective tax. See, this for first for first rounds. What I've noticed in the last couple of years, it takes a little while for offenses to get going, but defense normally clicks pretty quick because there's a lot of effort. A lot of a lot of defense is effort, and I feel like every team in the first round plays with a lot of effort, and uh, really good percentages here, guys. And um, yeah, it was just such a good game. Um, errors were even. Penalties conceded even, ruck infringements inside the 10s, you know, so um, interchanges, um, 7 to 10, so Parramatta only use 7 interchanges, they do that quite a lot, they never, they never, quite often, they won't use all their interchanges, Parramatta, and I'm not too sure why, um, you got them there, why not use them, sort of, <laughs> they, this went into Golden Point as well, and they still didn't use all their interchanges, wild, absolutely wild, um, but if we go to the player stats really quickly, oh my god, Hopgood, 
is a gun. I think this kid here, they don't even have his picture up yet. I think he's going to be uh, by the year, his, or signing of the year, whatever you want to call it. He was enormous, absolutely enormous. Harry Grant was huge. Junior Paulo as well, 208 running metres from a prop. Killed every single prop on the game. In the game, he was by far the best forward in the game. I think, um, and yeah, it was it was really good. But I really, I really do think um, Dylan Brown and Mitch Moses probably lost this for Parramatta. They were poor, really, really poor, both of them. Um, they're arguably the one of the best at the least um, halves combinations in the game. But they really did. They were they were off, way off. Dylan Brown dropped a couple balls cold. Uh, Mitch Moses missing goals, 66%. He's normally up around 80-something. So, yeah. Um, Josh Hodgson, really weird. Kept nearly throwing forward passes every pass. It was it was wild. But, um, yeah. And then, um, yeah, Nick Meany was great, like I said. I think uh, some of the, the, the debutantes are really good as well. But, yeah, Cam Munster and Jerome Hughes. Cam Munster had a compound fracture in his finger. He had the bone sticking out of it. And he kicked on. What a... F- what a beast. Let's go, Warriors Knights. Um, I had the Warriors here. Um, but this was it was actually an all right game. Like, I, I was actually... I, let's go through the stats first, then I'll go through the players. Possession was even. Time and possession was relatively even. Completion rates, you know, Warriors were better. That did let down the Knights a little bit. Um, yeah, running meters, Warriors, the Fords are running hard. It was really, really good. Average distance in uh, was far, way up. Like Warriors forwards were just running hard. It was really, really good to see. Playing the ball a little bit quicker, as you can see there. Um, and yeah, that was that's that's um, kicks 18, 17, kicking meters, nights. That's not too bad. Um, I'll, I'll keep going to talk about the players, but I'll try and save until I get to the players. Effective tackles, great from both. Like I said, defense is usually pretty solid at the start of the year. So, um, now going into players, um, let's have a quick look. Most tackles, I thought Torhu Harris was incredible. He had a really nice no look ball as well. Um, most run meters, Lachlan Miller. Okay, there you go. There you go. Line breaks. Okay, so for me, from the Warriors, I was I was massively impressed with Montoya. I think he was incredible. Tamari Martin, I thought he was really good as well at six. Um, Sean Johnson, I think was bad. I really didn't like what he was doing. Um, he kicked the ball out on the full a couple times. He needs to be better if they're going to win more games. I mean, they squeaked past it. Well, you know, they beat the Knights, but he's going to have to be better if they're going to if they're going to beat some uh, quality teams, sort of thing. Nia Cora was incredible. He could be another buy of the year coming from Parramatta. Toru Harris was great. I thought Dylan Walker was pretty good as well. Um, not too bad at all. So, um, just just a good. It's a solid start. It wasn't great. It wasn't pretty. But I, I said this at the start of the year. I don't think Warriors are going to like make the eight, make the four, anything like that. But they're going to win more games and be better than they were last year. Um, Lachlan Miller, yeah, he was he was all right, but nothing crazy. Um, Bradman Best, he was okay. Dominic Young, he was okay, but it was actually one of the worst games I've seen him play. He was uh, not as good as I was expecting him to be. Um, but, yeah, Callum Ponga, okay, I've been giving him a bit of a hard time lately. Um just because obviously I don't think his performances are up to his pay, but uh, his defense was better. It was wasn't terrible. Um, yeah, Jackson Hastings actually thought he looked pretty sharp. His kicking was good. Um, not too bad at all. Uh, Daniel Saifidi was okay. Both the Saifidi brothers were okay. Frizzell got knocked out early, and then uh, not much else got doing there. But um, Knights have some work to do, man. I'm telling you there way off and they're going to be bottom five if they don't change some things very soon what a game Broncos versus Penrith Broncos knocking off the reign and premier is the most dominant team of the 2020s and um, they're under the pump as we can see here they actually had less ball less time in possession completion rates were lower but they just defended their butts off absolutely defended their butts off and it was it was good to see man it was um really good now it was raining i actually put a bet down for this to go into the overs um i didn't bet on penrith but i thought they were going to win obviously and um yeah it was just good 
game. It was just a good, solid game. It's one of those, usually low-scoring games are boring, but this is one of those slow-scoring games, which was really, really good. Um, completion's pretty low from both teams. That's that's very rare from Penrith to be in the 70s. Um, well, you know, I mean, it does happen, but... Yeah, that was that was pretty low from then, and it, same as Broncos. Actually, everyone was giving Broncos rap and pretty much right in there, saying they're gonna you know make the eight, make the grand final. And I was like, they actually played pretty poorly in offense. They just defended really well. I was, I'm not sold on the Broncos yet. Not even close, to be honest. They, they've got they've still got a lot of work to do. And I know people always be like, what do you mean they beat that? I'm like, yeah, no, no. They, but remember, Penrith had bad games too. Penrith didn't play good. You guys didn't play that good either. But you guys played just well enough to get this one sort of thing. So, um, however, it doesn't matter how you win as long as you do sort of thing. But trust me, Broncos fans, a lot of Broncos fans will give me rubbish because I, I said I, don't, I think they're going to just miss the eight. Trust me, if you play like this, you won't make the eight. No, <laughs> you need to play better. But they were good enough to get it done, and that's the main thing. It's two points at the end of the day. Got Cowboys next week. Back it up, then you're on. Um, post contact meters, you know, pretty solid from Penrith. Um, but yeah, well, yeah, um, that's so rare too. Penrith normally have normally play the ball so much quicker than their opponent. Broncos were quicker there. This stat here is actually really, really important. I don't hear many people talking about it, but how quick you can play the ball is massive. I've said this before. I think Cotter from the Cowboys is one of the best props in the game purely because of this. He gets up and snaps the ball so quickly, and the Cowboys are off and running sort of thing. So um, that, this was really important. Um, plenty of offloads, but this was just a really not Penrith sort of game. It was... Um, yeah, it was, it was not good. But, you know, like I said, look how good these teams defended. I mean, you can't really take much away from Penrith here. They, you know, um, they, they <laughs> tackled at 90% efficiency. It's not not too bad at all. Um, but, yeah, uh, errors. Um, we'll go into players. Um, most, look at Isaiah Yo, Just killing it again. Um, Carrigan was incredible. Dylan Edwards... Solid, not as like he plays better normally, but solid. And look at Payne Haas, another two. Look at that, 289 meters from Dylan Edwards. I'm saying it wasn't his best game, and he ran for 289 meters. <sighs> Line breaks. Liam Martin was incredible. He looked really sharp. Um, solid in the fantasy points. Carrigan always solid at fantasy. So let's go through these really quick. Like I said, I thought Dylan Edwards was pretty good. Sunia. <laughs> I actually thought he was really good, really good replacement for, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, I've completely brain farted. I'm not going to sit here and try and remember his name for a long time. Crichton was awful. Crichton was awful. He was really, really bad. Um, if I was a Doggies fan, I would have been like, oh, no, what have we done? It was that bad. Um, terrible decisions, terrible defensive decisions and offensive. He put a couple bad kick, grubber kicks in. He kept diving for intercepts. It was really bad. Toto was solid, but not up to his extremely high standards. Luai, everyone's given him a bit of rubbish. I don't think he was that bad. He just didn't have his kick out out there to give the ball. Cleary was solid. Everyone gives him rubbish, but he, he did what he needed to do. Moses Leoder, I think in the first, his first stint was enormous. Same as Fisher Harris. Didn't quite have the same impact when he came back on. Luke Garner was okay. Lee Martin was really good. Isaiah Yo, great as always. Sonny Luke was incredible. The game actually shifted when he came on. Um, I think he almost needs to start uh, over Mitch Kenny. Uh, he was it was a noticeable noticeable difference when he came on, and the bench was actually pretty good. Sorensen, um, Spencer Lenu were not too bad either. Salmon, yeah, wasn't uh, wasn't great, but he he was okay. Selwyn Cobo, um, just doing what Selwyn Cobo does, rocks or diamonds. He, he did some terrible things. He had five errors and got dragged into touch twice when he shouldn't have. He went near the sideline twice in the rain and got dragged out twice. Need to be smarter. Corey Oates, again, was terrible. Um, two or three errors, not great. Katoni Staggs, did he even play? I love you, Katoni, but, bro, you got to get involved more. Herbie Farnworth was incredible. Two tries, inserted himself, came in looking for work. Absolutely amazing. Jesse Arthurs was really, really solid. I actually really, really liked him. Um, just 
came in, did a job. It was absolutely great. Ezra Mann, defense was incredible. Reynolds, just doing what Reynolds does. Corey Jensen was good. Billy Walters was good. Payne Haas was well above average. Kurt Capewell, best game I've seen him play from last year to now. It was I did, did not rate him last year. I thought he was well below what he can actually do, and it was good to see him do well. Jordan Ricky, I've been hard on him lately, um, but I actually thought he was pretty solid. Pat Garrigan's always good. Pat Carrigan, even. Corey Pakes, not too bad. Flegler came on was solid as well. So, you got one, Broncos. Good on you. Let's, uh, let's see if we can kick this thing on, eh? Let's see if we can kick it on, eh? Sea Eagles, Bulldogs. So, this game was actually in my um, my 10K challenge that I'm currently doing, guys. If you're not aware of that, essentially what you do is you put $10 down on a $2 bet. If it wins, you put your 20 down. You put your net, and then if that wins, you go 40, 80, 160, all the way up to 10K. And this was in that. And I had Sea Eagles to win head to head, and they did it easy. They did it easy. So, um, Make sure you follow my TikTok for that to stay up to date with the dates with all that sort of stuff. Actually, I'm posted on YouTube as well, just in my shorts. Um, but this was, uh, was great to see Turbo back. Uh, let's have a quick look at the um, the stats here. All right, so we've got possession. Manly absolutely dominated this. Um, completion rate was far better. Um, I'll get into it now. Doggies were awful. They were so bad. And I'm so disappointed with them. All the talk, all the chat before it, all the you all the this is the best, this is the, and they're just the talk, the talk, the talk. I was coming out and expecting really big things from them. And they dead set gave up with 20 minutes to go. They were, they were putridly bad. They, they were the only, they were actually the only team out of every team that played this weekend that were bad and terrible body language when they got down. I was not impressed with the Bulldogs at all. Um, and Cameron Serraldo wasn't either. Apparently he was pissed off at their performance. If you lose, who cares? You can't drop your head like that. Matt Burton's body language was putrid. He just looked like a sad sack. It was not good. And it was just, yeah. The body language for me... Who cares? Like every team loses games. Who cares? You can't drop your head in the first game of the season and pretty much give up with 20 minutes to go. It was really, really bad. And uh, I was not happy with them at all. Um, they've got a lot of soul searching to do because if they play like that, they will get rolled a lot. Oops. Completion rates were terrible. Matt Burton was awful. Um, I, I said it before, you take his bomb away and his average 5 eighth. He, you know what I mean he's too, and he can get better I'm not saying he's going to suck forever and he's only good at bombing he's just new to the role his decision making isn't perfect he doesn't do things a number, the way a number 6 should do sometimes and um, it was yeah it was well below average um, performance from him he I mean they they got starved of the ball one, one thing you probably see and if you did watch a game they got starved of the ball for a long time they got the ball back on on their own try line they got pumped got out to about the 20 meter zone he got it he's got the biggest boot in the game and he passes it to kick out who kicks it out on the full like, what are you doing man it was so bad but every, they lost every stat like they were they were awful they were so bad they won the offloading stat but yeah i was uh was not very impressed with this at all um defense was all right and that do a lot of it as well but 15 errors, 9 penalties conceded, just not good enough, not not good enough, but yeah, so let's go through the players quickly, uh, most tackle, shining light, Reen Marnie was brilliant, he could be another buy of the year, he was absolutely incredible, 51 tackles, he was the only player trying in the last 20 minutes, Reed Marnie, only player trying in the last... Um, yeah, in the last 20 minutes. He played the whole game at full speed. Absolute gun. Good on you. thought Rudin Gabrick was really good as well. Pram, pretty good. Jake Averillo, not too bad either. But, um, yeah, it was it was not good. Travojevic, he looked still injured. Um, he actually got out in the clear once and literally pulled up. Um, yeah, he's not right. Um, but he's so good that he still impacted the game heavily. And... Um, yeah, he's a, he's a freak. 
Uh, Brad Parker I thought was really good in defense. Uh, Christian was he was solid. Uh, he he couple boo boos, couple good things. He was he was good. Cole, I never really got a chance. I was really excited to see him. I love seeing him out in the open. Um, Garrett, good. Cooper Johns was, I thought, solid. Cherry Evans was a brilliant, absolutely amazing. Um, I just keep waiting for him to slow down, man. He just keeps doing his job. Uh, Paseca, he was really, really good until about the last five minutes of the game, and he, I think he gave a penalty and knocked the ball on twice. But really, massive impact when he came on. Croker, great. He got knocked out towards the end of the game. Travojevic, just what else can we say? Olukawatu versus Kikau. I was looking forward to this. Two of the most biggest dynamic beasts in the game. Olukawatu absolutely made Kikau his bitch in this game. He destroyed him. This was not even close. You would not think they're the same size. He squashed kick out time and time and time again. If this kid can learn how to, you know, like just play the role, know when to play and when not to play. I said that wrong. When he's like footy IQ, like picks up, and I'm not saying he's got a dumb footy IQ, but when he's just, because he's young, when he gets that right, he's going to be a problem. He's... He's going to be a problem. He just has, when I say that, he just has some games where he has either no impact or he'll have a massive negative impact. But he's just so, when he's on, he is so good. I've actually all sort of thought he had the potential to be better than kick air. And uh, we all know the raps kick air gets. Um, Kepi was solid. And um, yeah, the, Josh LAA was really good as well. So really, really good. Um, Manly, I said, if, if they get everything together, they could make the eight for sure. And doggies, you have a lot of work to do. Way off, guys. Way, way off. This was the second game I had in my bet, guys. Cowboys, Raiders, what a game. Now, just lay out how this game sort of went. The first half, I have close to never seen a better performance ever. Cowboys were so perfect. We've seen bigger score lines in a half, but I mean just like their defense was perfect, their kicking, like their completion rate, like they literally didn't, it was flawless to the 38th minute. Then they made a mistake. They, Canberra scored a try, and all of a sudden it's 12, eight, uh, sorry, 6 uh, 18, and um, Raiders got back in the game. But Cowboys were. I was I was honestly at half time going man I have to I'm going to do a video saying that Cowboys get I've never seen a team play like this before this is the best it's the most well balanced team they've got every all the pieces go Cowboys are going to kill everyone and then they were putrid in the second half and Raiders were amazing um, they just held on just got it done and this was my second bet in my 10k challenge and I had the Cowboys. Thank God. So we're under level two in the 10K challenge now, but such a good game. This was this this round of footy, there wasn't a real bad game. There was actually, every game was pretty damn good. Tigers-Titans was good. It was, it was just, every, normally there's like three good games and the rest you end up, you watching your phone half the time and it's just sort of boring. Every, every game was good here. Um, completion rate was still pretty damn good from Cowboys. It, it was actually perfect at uh, half time. Uh, well, 38 minutes in, it was perfect. And, you know, still only... So what do they make? Five mistakes in the in this last 42 minutes of the game. So still pretty good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was uh, it was crazy game. Crazy, crazy game. Pretty even here. Play the ball speed. Offloads. Canberra started to offload quite a bit in the second half. Um, defense efficiency, damn near equal. Tackles made. Cowboy, Canberra didn't get the ball for about 20 minutes. They made so many tackles. I actually was so impressed with um, the Raiders because I, it was 30 degrees up there. They made so many more tackles in the first half. I was like, it doesn't matter even if they get back into the game. They're not going to have the juice to get home. Which they, I guess they didn't. I guess I was sort of right, but they just kept playing. I was like, "Damn, these guys are good." Everyone's writing Raiders off this year. I think they're going to be a problem when they get their full back back. When they get all their pieces, and they get in the swing of things, they always take a little while to get going. I think the Raiders are still going to make the eight. Errors, pretty bad for the Raiders. Penalties concede, um, 
conceded, pretty even. Ruck infringement is inside the 10. And uh, yeah, it was just a cracking game. Let's go through the players quickly. Most tackles, damn, Reese Robson. He was really good, real good. Tarpany was incredible. Reuben Cotter. <laughs> Man, you could make a case that he's... I know, I'm probably the only one saying this. No, I'm such a big fan of his. Like, he... The props I give a hard time are the ones that are slow. I think speed, the speedy prop is the new prop. And he is, there's no one faster than him as a prop. He's the flying mullet, man. He gets up, bang, gets hit, snaps the ball out the back. He is so good. And, he's, and then Tamalolo, Nick Hates next hit up. He's got all this space because the defense is still retreating. He's absolute gun. I, lo I love it. Um, Tulangi was all right. Reese Robson again. Tom Starling, he was actually really good, Tom Starling. Uh, drink water. I just love this Cowboys team. Like it's just so well balanced. Like drink water is a fullback. He's not someone that wants to play fullback, like a centre that's playing fullback because he wants to be a fullback to make more money. He is a genuine out and out fullback. Glides across the grass. He's just incredible. Kyle Felt did what Kyle Felt does. Good things and bad things. I thought Val Holmes was a great, really really good. Peter Hicko was Hicko was solid. Talalangi pretty good. Dearden got shut down pretty hard. Townsend was amazing. Um, Dearden didn't do anything wrong. He just, every time he caught the ball, there was a defender about to smack him. McLean was okay. Reese Robson was good. Cotto, like I said, was amazing. Hess was pretty solid. Nanai got shut down pretty hard as well. I said this about Nanai. He, he had a massive year last year. And um, I was chatting to a Cowboys fan about it. He's only going to get better because he's young. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, one thing you got to remember too is... When you're brand new into the league, like there's no film on you, and you sort of have the like a little bit of element of surprise. Now they're doing tape on on it, and now uh, they're like, I know he comes off this foot. I know this is when he likes this. I know, so he, you know, that he he'll be easier to shut down this year because you sort of have a little idea of what he's going to do. But still, super incredible. Tell Malolo, when does he have a bad game? Seriously, I actually thought Granville came on and had some good um, meters. I actually like this kid, this Griffin. I'm not too sure how to say his name. Neem? Neem? Uh, really, really good. I, I like him. He's, he's solid. But um, Raiders, oh, man. Sebastian Chris did his best. He's not a fullback. He's a center. Um, Crotrick was all right. Uh, Rapana was okay. Jack Whiten, some good things. You know, he wasn't too bad. Fogarty really didn't get into the game. Um... You know, it's this Tarpany was all is always good. Hudson Young, not bad. Whitehead, pretty good. Harold Weir and Ira, I thought he was pretty solid. And uh, Tom Starling was awesome. Corey Horsburgh was massive. I think Canberra's bench was probably the best I've ever seen a bench perform. It was just they did, they they're the ones that got the Cowboys uh, the Raiders back into this. The bench was outstanding. Sharks, Rabbitohs, so gutted. Heinze wasn't playing in this one. I was really looking forward to this, and I actually thought the Sharkies could have probably pipped him if he was there. But um, just a little bit outclassed. Um, when do you see a completion rate like this from the Sharkies? But bunnies were good. Bunnies were good. Um, can't really, can't really um, talk too much about this game because not. Oh, damn, this great tackle deficiency. It was just because I feel like Sharkies were... Actually, you know what? Sharkies were so good without Hines. I was, they actually were so much better. Everyone was like, Rabbitohs are going to win this. And I know this doesn't oh, it doesn't look like a big win, but this was close, closer than in the game sort of suggests. The, I mean, um, there was a sin bin with not long to go, with Sharkies sort of right on the... You know, Sharkies were starting to get momentum and stuff like that. So... This, this was actually pretty close. I think if Hornsey was in here, this this could have been a different story. Um, however, the number seven, what was his name? I've bloody spaced on his name. Also, I've got to remember that kid's name. Brandon Trindle. He was enormous. He was... He, what a backup. <laughs> he's, he's straight up first grade level. He is not a backup. He is absolutely... He's really good. Um, I was really impressed with him. Will Kennedy, I reckon he's one of the most underrated fullbacks in the game. Really, really good. Katoa was solid. Raymond was solid. Talakai was good. Mulatalo was good. Matt Moylan was decent. Toby Rudolph was enormous. Um, Braley did his job. Ueli, he was enormous. Nakora, 
didn't really inject himself as much as I would have liked. I really like him. Um, and, yeah, the rest... Uh, oh, Fanukin. Was, yeah. When does Fanukin have a bad game? Seriously. Um, I was up, sorry, I missed these parts. So, top tackles down. Cam Murray. The funny thing was, Cam Murray obviously had a solid game, but he didn't really affect... Like he normally he's setting up tries or you know the link pass to a to a try assist or something like that. By his standards, it was a quiet game, but he was still so good. Check these running meters out. The centers getting the most meters. Campbell Graham and Talakai absolutely killing it. Campbell Graham was huge. Um, Lachlan Elias was really really good as well. Latrell pretty quiet game. He didn't do a whole heap. Really nice. Um, really nice ball to set up a try though. And this, this right here, everyone was going, you're putting bets down for this game? And I said, absolutely not. And the reason why I don't is I don't like betting too many, especially any time try scorers early in the comp, because you don't know how these teams are going to attack. Last year, all Rabideau's attack went down the left. This game, it was all down the right. You need to, I usually like to wait three or four rounds to be like, all right, this is how this team's playing. Let's target this. But yeah, they were... That did not go down Johnson's side at all, and I'm sure a lot of people lost money um, putting him as any time try scorer. Um, but that was, like I said, Campbell Graham was incredible. Cody Walker was solid. Lachlan Elias, best I've seen him play. Totola got knocked out in the first hit up. Um, Cookie was real good. Burgess was good. Kalal Matangi was good. Jai Arrow did his hammy. We'll have to see how he sort of goes. And Cam Murray was solid, but just like I said, just didn't. Didn't normally hear his name every second minute or second second, <laughs> but yeah, he's just uh, just a little bit quiet. Um, but it's so enormous still, like it's just quiet for his like extremely high standards as top two or three lock in the game. The mighty Dolphins, Wayne Bennett, what the hell trashed the Roosters. In the second half, it wasn't close. It looked like a, this. This honestly looked like I, I called early. I said this is a Q Cup team. Roosters look like the Q Cup team here. Dolphins pumped them. They beat them physically. They beat them up. That better lines, but everything was everything was better than the Roosters. And um, I'm going to talk about this soon, but I think the Roosters are in some strife this year. Everyone's got them to win the comp, and I'm not basing it on this in particular. It's more last year and the way they're choosing to play and um, how that's going to affect them this year and what what I was thinking happened in this game and I'll go through it real quick now so um, actually I'll go through it in a sec when we get to the players but possession Redcliffe just held the ball and they just completed high in all fairness Roosters were pretty bad as well but it was one of those. Sometimes teams just play bad. This, the, I felt the Dolphins made them play bad. They were up in their faces, you know, doing all that sort of stuff. Um, there's playing bad two different ways. Sometimes you just play bad, like you just do dumb stuff, and it's just unforced errors. These are more forced errors um, from the Dolphins. They were absolutely just really, really good. Look at these meters. Absolutely killed them. Fast play the balls. So good. Plenty of offloads. Dummy, chucking the dummies. Plenty of passing. Look at that. Kicks, plenty. Kicking meters, solid. Um, effective tackles, pretty much the same. Uh, negative plays, it made plenty of errors as well. Um, but look at that, look at that. Penalties conceded. Inside the tens on reports, sin bins. Damn, not good, not good. Now, uh, let's have a look at this first before I get into the problems with the Roosters. Um, Tom Gilbert, he was good. He had a couple errors in there, but really, really solid. Um, I really like him. He's he's really good. I really like this good. I said this, one of the reasons why I thought the Dolphins, not the Dolphins, the Cowboys might drop off a little bit, was I thought these two were going to be massive losses. And they obviously are because they played so good. But um, yeah, that was... Cowboys are still great without them, but damn, they're obviously pretty damn good players. I actually don't, I don't mind this kid, this Osako. I think he's solid. I, he, he, when Broncos were good, when he was sort of bursting onto the scene, he was not, he was really good. Like, I felt like he got a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of the blame at the end there, and obviously then he went to a Titans team that wasn't very competitive, 
And Mark Nichols, the GOAT, was massive. Um, Turpin, yeah, okay. Uh, Tupo was okay. Tedesco was good, but just way below his high standards. Lindsay Collins, oh, don't, not a huge fan, not a huge fan. Now let's go to the Roosters. Um, now, the problem I think they have is because I think they're so dependent on Victor Radley linking in the middle. You see, whenever he has a bad game or he gets knocked out, which is all the time, or injured or whatever, they really fall apart. And because Victor is such an intricate piece to them winning games, because he throws himself at people's hips and knees and tries to do, put shots on and do all this stuff, he gets taken out a lot. And when he gets taken out, they miss that link and, they, and then they miss the defense as well. And they really fall apart. Like They, they fell apart. He went off in the first half because his eye got hit in the eye, and that's when Dolphins started to get on top. He came back on in the second half, got knocked out, and then they fell apart again. And I, I said this last year, like whenever he gets hurt, whenever he's injured, whenever he's not playing, they look soft in the middle, and then they lose that link as well. And because it's it's sort of so hard, but be, he's so hard and so, plays so hard, and that's why the Roosters' middle is so good. But because he plays so hard, he's not a big guy. He gets knocked out, he gets hurt, he gets injured, he gets HIA'd all the time. And they fought, they look really soft in the middle all of a sudden. And I think it's going to be a problem this year. I think he's going to miss a lot of games. And they don't really have anyone similar to replace him. So I think, I'm actually really, I know, and not, not because they lost a game to the to the Dolphins. I just, I genuinely think they're probably going to lose a lot of games this year because Victor Radley's probably going to pay 18 games max. Um, and that, that's I'm genuinely worried about it. I, I really am, and th- I'm not being a hater. I, I like the Roosters, and but I, I, I um, yeah, I'm I'm genuinely worried. But let's go through the Dolphins and talk about more positivity. Hammer, awesome. Azako, Isaac, awesome. Ewan Aiken was really good. Branko Lee was good. Tessie New was solid. Katoa, oh, was, I've never seen him play before. Great. O'Sullivan. I had a little cheap shot at him saying he's a New South Wales Cup player. Hell nah, he's not. He was awesome. Bromwich looked 21 again. Absolutely killed it. Marshall King was elite. He was so good. I was so impressed with him. Jared Wallace. I've had a few shots at him as well. <coughs> uh, but he was good, man. He was he, not not great, but he was he was all right. Kafusi was good. Bromwich as well. Solid. Tim Gilbert was good. And Mark Nicholas was amazing. Ray Stone was solid. It was just a real. It was literally everyone just played good, and that's how I went down. And congratulations to the mighty Dolphins. All right, final game, which is probably the most boring game, but it was still pretty damn good. I can't complain. It was still went right, sort of right down to the wire. Tigers were attacking in probably in the last fifteen minutes of the game, and um, look, they had all the possession. You know, they had more time in possession. Just didn't complete that well. <laughs> yeah, but they dropped the ball. A lot of these incomplete sets were actually at the end of the game. They had a lot of opportunities and just kept dropping the ball and stuff like that. But the, the ref was letting the wrestle go down. Super slow play of the balls. Um, plenty of offloads from the Tigers. It was actually pretty close. Like This game, like I actually thought the Tigers were going to run over the top of them. Um, Kieran Foran went down. Uh, yeah, it was not looking good for the Titans there for a little while. Um, effective tackles, not quite as good as some of the other games. Plenty of errors. Um, so it, this game was probably the hardest game to watch, but it was still still solid. All right, so let's go have a quick run through these. I thought Laurie was pretty damn good, but he made a few mistakes as well. Nofaluma was great. He was real good. Brett Naden, I really like him. A um, couple errors as well. Um, who else played? Dewey looked really good. Brooks looked solid. Appy was actually pretty damn average and started off the bench. What? Clemmer was solid. Papa Lee did some really good things, but he did about five terrible things as well. Um, yeah, it was not very impressive performance from Papa Lee. Offering Gowie was okay. Um, I thought Twal was going to get over the line as well, man. Let's go, man. Get your first try, brother. Um, Titans, let's have a quick look at them. Brimson was good. I really liked him. Uh, Jojo Fafita was solid. Kieran Foran actually looked really good. And, man, he's just a competitor. He was playing so hard. But he was grabbing the back of his knee at, and had to go off. And it did not look good. 
Um, yes, it was not good. Um, Sam Verrills was solid. Um, Big Tino. What can you say? Dave Fafita. One thing I will say, I wasn't overly impressed with his performance, but like he got involved more. He didn't just hang right out on the edge. He came in, did a bit of work, and was solid. Isaac Liud was good. Jaden Campbell came on uh, towards the end of the game and was solid. Um, Aaron Clark, is that how you say his name? He was good. I really liked him. He's a um, little ball of energy. He's like a little mini cheese. He's uh, real, real good. But that's it, guys. But, man, it was just such a good round of footy. But if I had to, let's go team of the round and flop of the round. Who I was most impressed with and who I was least impressed with. Most impressed with, hands down, the Dolphins. I was so impressed with the way they played. Just so much energy, so much effort, and you can tell how much it meant to them, hands down. And I'm not talking like rubbish. I actually think they were the best team of round one. Like, I'm not saying they would have beat every other team, but if we just go through this really quickly, um, you know, both had tons of, you know, wasn't neither team was great for 80 minutes. Neither team was great for 80 minutes. Neither team was great for 20 minutes. I know Broncos are probably thinking that, you know, oh, but we won. Yeah, but you had multiple poor things throughout it. Manly had some pretty poor patches. Doggies were awful. Cowboys looked the best team in the comp, but then had a terrible second half, vice versa. Right, he, Rabbitohs had some patchy times. You know, like, Roosters were awful. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, Dolphins were good for 80 minutes. They were good the whole time. And again, I'm not saying they will. They were the best team and would have beat any team, but they put in a proper full 80-minute performance. Uh, and I, I genuinely think they were the best team in the first round. Um, wild man, absolutely wild. I uh, would not thought I would would not have thought I would have said that. Biggest flop of the round. Not let's trot, baby. Let's flop. That was putrid performance. Bulldogs have a lot of work to do. Like I said at the start of the video, it was such poor body language, such poor effort. I mean, you did all this talk before. You've poached, not poached, signed news players. You've been talking it up. You've got legends of the game come in and help you out. Sonny Bill, Willie Mason, Willie Tonga, Ogre. All these guys are in there helping you out. You've brought on, you brought back Josh Reynolds. You know, you've talked about Cole, all this stuff, and you just, that was... So not a doggies performance. So a lot of work to do for the doggies. And that is it, guys. Oh, the St. George Dragons. I actually said this was a joke on my TikTok. You know, because I think yeah, I, I sort of picked Redcliffe to be fighting the spoon out with the St. George Dragons. And I said, I bet your Dragons fans are sitting there going, oh, no, we might be the wooden spoon here because Dolphins were amazing. What do you do, man? What do you do? But um, we'll have to wait till next Sunday to see them. So they've got a real late start to the season. But um, be interested to see how they play. But that's pretty much it from me, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments, guys. And bring on round two, man. Let's go. I'll make sure I um, do a video every... I'll probably do it Wednesday after team lists come in. And I'll go over... Um, I'll go over, you know tips who I think is going to win, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff too. So thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.